is Professor Rose Woodrow and from University of Primskoma. Oh, sorry. Uh, Primorska. Primorska, sorry. <laughs> Primorska, Slovenia. And uh, thank you, Professor, for uh, uh, accepting our invitation for this talk. Professor Rose Woodrow's uh, research interest is uh, mainly focusing on uh, geometric combinatorics, including uh, uh, geometric and topology combinatorics and connection related to the algebraic structures like group theory and commutative algebra. So over to you. And he is talking about today on algebra and topology of lattice of subgroups. OK. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, and I, I hope everyone can see me and hear me well. Uh, I'm, so I am going to be giving a document camera talk here today. Uh, so I will be writing and talking here. Uh, you will uh, want to have me in, um, uh, in uh, you will want to have Zoom in speaker mode uh, so that this is uh, big enough to see on your screen. Uh, and uh, I won't always be able to see questions in the chat. Uh, so if, if there is a question in the chat, I'd appreciate it if uh, 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 someone would, uh, uh, interrupt me and, and tell me uh, so that I can uh, try to answer it. Okay, so uh, I'm uh, going to talk about uh, uh, some relationships between group theory uh, and commutative algebra and topology. Uh, so um, uh, my research is in uh, topological combinatorics. Uh, I actually came to topological combinatorics uh, from finite group theory, and I want to uh, tell you how I made that journey. Um, okay, so I assume that you know what a simplicial complex is. Okay, so I assume that. Uh, something that I don't assume you know about uh, is uh, an order complex. So the order complex uh, of a bounded poset. Uh, so a bounded poset P is uh, one with a top and a bottom. So I'm going to call the bottom zero, I'm going to call the top one. Uh, so this is a simplicial complex. Uh, with the vertex set uh, P, but so look, the post sets that come up naturally are going to have a bottom and top. Uh, I always want to throw the bottom and top away. So I'm going to just uh, put that into my definition. So I take the bottom and top, I throw them away. That's going to be my vertex set. Uh, and uh, 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 the face set, there's a set of faces um, are going to be the uh, chains in uh, again, P minus zero and one. Okay, so the vertex subsets, which happen to be chains, and a chain is just a uh, linearly ordered subset. Okay, so that's uh, the main definition of, of the talk. Uh, Every definition, according to me, should come with an example. Uh, and uh, to do something interesting, it helps to uh, do things with the computer. Uh, so I'm going to uh, throw up uh, this example here. Uh, I hope everyone can see this OK. Uh, and perhaps I could check in. Is, is everyone able to uh, see what I'm writing reasonably well? Uh, is everyone able to understand my accent? Yeah, I think it's fine. Okay, good. All right, well, here's an example. Uh, I've got uh, uh, two pictures up here side by side. 
On the uh, left, I have a poset. On the right, I have a, a, a cell complex. This is not a simplicial complex. Uh, it is, a, I guess, a polyhedral complex. So it's built by gluing together uh, four squares. Uh, and I'm doing this to form a torus. So th this, uh, uh, this edge uh, AC, uh, which I've also labeled as five on the left, is the same thing as the edge AC labeled five on the right of this uh, uh, diagram. Uh, and I can take this. Okay, so these two are the same. All right. Well, the uh, order complex of this, well, this has uh, faces such as A, one A. Okay, so uh, that's a linearly ordered subset. So it's a face uh, because A is less than one is less than capital A. Now uh, over here in this uh, cell complex, uh, you could identify this, you can draw in the triangle if you want and it will look like that. Okay, and similarly, we have uh, 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 A to A. Uh, if I'm clever, I can switch colors, uh, say to blue. So uh, A to A, uh, well, that's gonna be the same. Uh, now notice, uh, uh, a, A is a linearly ordered subset, so that itself is a face. And then uh, our, we get a triangle from this putting in two, and you could identify it with this. All right, so uh, continuing uh, forward with this, you can uh, see, I hope, uh, or at least believe uh, that the uh, order complex uh, of this uh, post set that I've drawn on the right. Okay, so this post set isn't, a, I, I've drawn it without a top and bottom. I'm cheating a little bit, uh, but, but uh, okay, throw them on, take them away, whatever. Um, the uh, order complex associated with the post set uh, on the left, excuse me, uh, is uh, going to be, uh, what you could think of as the barycentric subdivision of the guy on the right. So I put a point in the middle of each square. I put a point in the middle of each uh, edge. Uh, I put a point for each vertex uh, and I uh, connect those up uh, in the uh, logical way, which uh, turns out to be the same as the way that you do it in the order complex. Okay. Uh, any questions at this point? Uh, I think that this definition. Uh, ah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, are, are you assuming uh, that uh, you are going to gluing together these sides? Yeah, I, uh, uh, yeah, so these two sides are the same. So this uh, edge, uh, um, let me get another color. Um, this edge uh, A2 here is the same thing as this edge uh, A2 here uh, and uh, well, you can see that A2, uh, it's contained in A, uh, capital A, it's also contained in uh, capital C. Uh, so I can uh, go uh, also up to capital C over here. Uh, and that's, uh, that's perfectly fine. Okay, okay, thank you. So the uh, order complex of the post set on the left is going to give you a triangulation of the torus. Uh, the triangulation of the torus is going to be the subdivision of the uh, uh, diagram uh, of the cell complex on the right. 
Okay, and something similar holds for any nice enough cell complex, let me mention. Uh, so uh, perhaps a, another example, okay, so I'll put example uh, torus in parentheses because I showed that to you. Uh, another example you might like, uh, my favorite poset is the uh, Boolean lattice, Bn. Uh, so that's just uh, all uh, uh, subsets of uh, an N element set. Uh, so, well, let's see, uh, an N element set, well, you could think of that as being a simplex. Uh, now, uh, right, because a simplex is exactly the uh, simplicial complex where every subset is a face. Now I'm throwing away the top and the bottom, uh, and in particular, I'm throwing away the top. So if you take uh, delta Bn, uh, you will get something which is uh, uh, isomorphic as a simplicial complex to the barycentric subdivision uh, of the boundary of the uh, n minus one simplex. Okay, so to make this completely concrete, uh, I could take uh, uh, B3, uh, I'm gonna uh, throw away the top and bottom, I won't draw those. Uh, so uh, let's see, we get something that looks like that. Uh, and you can see uh, that that uh, we can think of the uh, bottom guys as being vertices of a triangle and the top guys as being uh, points in the middle of edges of the triangle. And we get the uh, a subdivision of the uh, boundary of a triangle. Okay, so that's uh, my main star uh, for this talk. Uh, I want to specifically look at uh, the subgroup lattice uh, of a finite group G. Uh, so this will be the uh, uh, poset of subgroups uh, of uh, group G. Uh, my, group, uh, my groups are always gonna be finite here. Uh, and then I want to uh, think about delta L of G. Okay, so this looks like uh, maybe slightly crazy thing to do. Uh, I want to convince you that it's not. <laughs> um, and uh, indeed, there's one application uh, which is uh, simple and down to earth. This is well known. This isn't the main thing I wanna talk about. Um, I mean, well known, I mean, well known to the right people, I guess, uh, where that's, whenever you're talking about well known in math, you need, mean well known among maybe 50 people. Uh, but um, if I want to count uh, the number of uh, uh, S tuples. Okay, uh, of group elements, so that uh, G is generated by the things listed in the S tuple. Then uh, it turns out that. Uh, the topology of delta L of G uh, can help you do that. It's not the only way to do it, and you can solve this problem without doing any topology, but I like doing topology, so uh, I'm gonna uh, tell you about the uh, topology approach. Uh, so, uh, well, how do I count something like this? Well, uh, the natural thing to do for me is to uh, take the number of S tuples. Uh, let's see, so that's gonna be just uh, 
uh, the size of G to the S, right? Because I can, I've got G ways of, size of G ways of picking the first guy and size of G ways of picking the second guy and so forth and so on. And these are all independent. Now, what could go wrong? Well, all of the S tuples could be in a common maximal subgroup, or excuse me, all of the group elements could be in a common maximal subgroup. So, uh, well, I can subtract off, well, I can take away all the, look at all the maximal subgroups in G and just subtract off uh, the size of that to the S. Now, I mean, this is inclusion exclusion. So just like you always do in inclusion exclusion problems, you notice, hey, you know, actually I've subtracted away. I mean, sometimes uh, my, all of my group elements will be in multiple maximal subgroups. I mean, maybe all of my group elements are the identity. So um, now I have to add in, uh, I'm gonna uh, drop my uh, indexing. Uh, I'm gonna have some kind of a coefficient here. Uh, and I'm going to uh, add in uh, K1 intersect K2 to the S. So I'm thinking of both of these as being maximal subgroups. Uh, so I'm uh, uh, adding back the stuff that I've subtracted too many times. But then after you do that, you've added things back too many times. So you have to subtract again, uh, minus uh, plus, I mean, you keep doing this for a while. Uh, so uh, after some work, uh, which uh, involves uh, getting into Mobius inversion, uh, you get uh, that this is actually equal to the summation over uh, all subgroups of G. I'll put a less than or equal to indicate that that's a subgroup and not just a subset um, of, uh, well, I'll have the K to the S, I'll have a coefficient here. What is the coefficient going to be? Well, it's gonna be determined from delta of uh, the order complex of the interval from K to G and specifically, it's gonna be the reduced Euler characteristic of that interval. Uh, and I hear a question coming up, perhaps. Yeah, uh, in fact, I was just thinking about uh, from the initial built up, uh, you would like to uh, build some multi-chain of the group structure, but uh, then inclusion exclusion is telling something, do, does it have anything to do with the multi-chain multi -chain poset of uh, the group structure? Uh, let's see. Uh, you can also look at uh, multi-chains uh, here. Uh, I don't usually think about those and I don't have a great answer uh, uh, offhand. Um, and uh, do you did you take any assumptions? So uh, here you are building the post set structure. Uh, uh, you are building the post set structure based on the inclusion of uh, the subset, or uh, with the normality with respect to the normality of the subgroup. Uh, yeah, this is just all uh, all subgroups, and this is the, um, this uh, uh, KG is looking at an interval. Uh, and an interval in a poset is the same thing as an interval in the real numbers. Okay. Uh, you look at everything okay. between K and G, uh, exclusive, uh, excuse, inclusive, uh, and then you throw away the top okay. and the bottom. Um, so this is the interval between K and G. Um, okay, so that's uh, uh, still a poset. It's got a top and a bottom. The top is G, the bottom is K. So I'm gonna throw those away and uh, uh, take the uh, some pushal complex of chains. Um, the reduced Euler characteristic of this uh, is the right uh, coefficient for inclusion exclusion. Uh, yeah, this, thank you, thank you. So this actually was observed by uh, Philip Hall 
uh, in the paper where he introduced uh, post Mobius inversion. Uh, he didn't know that this was uh, an Euler characteristic. Uh, he just uh, said, you know, I've got these uh, coefficients, uh, you know, and I want to show you two ways of looking at them. Uh, one of those ways uh, was uh, uh, when you just, uh, uh, as soon as you have the simplicial complex, <laughs> it's the definition of the Euler uh, characteristic. Okay, uh, I will uh, uh, mention a little bit further uh, one reason to do topological combinatorics uh, is, uh, well, uh, hard combinatorics questions uh, often are answered with inclusion exclusion uh, arguments. Uh, so if you want to understand those, uh, well, a good model could be uh, the reduced lower characteristic uh, because, well, you know, inclusion, exclusion, you've got plus, minus, plus, minus, uh, reduced Euler characteristic, you also have plus, minus, plus, minus. Um, and if life is good, moving to topology could give you some extra tools. Okay, so this is so what I'm uh, at. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Yeah, regarding to uh, mobile function, uh, will you... Uh, bring into account the rank function of a poset? Uh, I don't I need the it. rank here uh, to deal with this. Um, yeah, the, the, um, the Mobius function for, a, a, well, the point is that this is uh, uh, e equal to the Mobius uh, uh, function. Um, uh, but you, you don't need uh, rank to define Mobius, uh, the Mobius function in a post set, um, you know, in uh, some nice circumstances, you can say uh, good things about the Mobius function, depending on rank. Uh, I think I will uh, leave this off. I, I just wanna give this as background uh, to show you another problem you can solve. Um, uh, I can give uh, okay. references of good places to read this uh, uh, if people are interested. Um, so, uh, so that's uh, one application of uh, that lets you use uh, uh, the order complex. Uh, and the subgroup lattice to, to do something interesting, I hope. I mean, to count something that you might care about. Um, the main thing I wanna talk about is another uh, topic. Uh, so what I would broadly like to do is to uh, try to determine uh, properties uh, of my group G uh, well, you know, one thing I could do was, is just determine them from uh, L of G. Uh, but really, I want to determine them. Sorry, that's a terrible parenthesis. Parenthesis. Uh, really, I want to determine them from uh, delta L of G. My uh, some partial complex. Uh, and or uh, its topology and algebra. So uh, I want to uh, first give you a negative result. You, you can't determine uh, the isomorphism type or even uh, whether- Professor, uh, there is a comment. Uh, ah, could you please increase the font size? Can I increase the font size? Yes. Uh, yes, I can try to write a little bit bigger. Uh, I will uh, start trying to do that henceforth. So the last uh, sentence says, can't, you can't determine the isomorphism type uh, or whether uh, G is abelian, for example. Um, so if you take the subgroup lattice of S3 and the subgroup lattice of Z3 squared, uh, and I hope this font size is a little bit big, a little bit better. Um, yes, I I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do about a third larger. Um, uh, 
these two uh, are isomorphic as lattices, right? They're both, they both uh, look like, well, let's see, we've got uh, two groups uh, of uh, order, which is a product of primes, the same and different. Uh, so they both have a uh, identity subgroup and a uh, G subgroup. And each one of them has four non-trivial subgroups in between. Okay, so, well, uh, any property that's different between S3 and Z3 squared, uh, you're not gonna be able to uh, detect uh, from just looking at the subgroup lattice. Um, you could try to enrich it, and that's an interesting uh, problem also to look at. Um, uh, my uh, favorite group property is solvability. Uh, and solvability can be determined. Okay, so uh, this is a result of, uh, uh, oops, Suzuki, if I can spell his name, of Suzuki and independently of uh, uh, Zappa uh, in the 1950s. Uh, so, uh, well, this was not uh, particularly constructive and the proof was uh, uh, hard enough uh, that, uh, and sort of mm, technical enough uh, that uh, uh, I think it was the last paper that Suzuki ever wrote on uh, lattices of subgroups. Um, a, uh, uh, an explicit and pretty nice uh, criterion uh, was given by uh, Schmidt uh, in the late 1960s. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you just a little bit about uh, uh, Schmidt's uh, criterion. Uh, well, I'm, I need to remember uh, what a uh, solvable group is uh, a little bit. Uh, a group is solvable uh, if, well, there are multiple definitions uh, that you might like. Uh, one is if there exists a series uh, which is what the group theorists call uh, a chain of subgroups. Uh, so I'll start with one, I'll go up to, uh, to N1, I'll keep going up uh, until I get to G. Uh, and the rule is that uh, uh, each NI is normal in G and uh, each uh, factor ni mod ni minus one is a billion. Okay, you can uh, uh, improve a billion to, uh, um, uh, is a finite vector space, but it won't make much difference for us. Uh, another uh, condition, I'll put an and or since these are equivalent, uh, there exists a uh, maximal chain uh, one equal K naught, which is normal in K one, which is normal in, and you keep going up until you get to KM. So uh, here each uh, subgroup is required to be normal in the next, uh, none of them except for K M minus one is required to be normal in G. Uh, so you can put a stronger condition on them than 
uh, so then each uh, uh, factor here uh, is uh, indeed cyclic uh, of uh, prime order. Okay, uh, so uh, Schmidt's uh, criterion uh, replaced uh, the normal here uh, with a lattice theoretic uh, version of normal uh, called modular. Uh, and I uh, think I'm not even going to define that. Maybe I'll come back uh, to it if there's interest. Okay, well, uh, none of this is particularly uh, topological or algebraic, and I promised some topology and uh, algebra coming in here. So uh, let me tell you my favorite characterization. So this is a theorem um, it's uh, essentially uh, due to uh, Shoreshian uh, in a 2001 paper. Uh, I'll explain the essentially part in a second. Uh, the following are equivalent for a finite group G. The first is that G is solvable. Okay, well, he said he was going to talk about uh, characterizations of solvable, so that makes sense. Uh, the second is that delta L of G is shallowable. Uh, which uh, I'm uh, putting some words in here that I haven't defined yet. Um, and I will, uh, I will say approximately what this means in a second. The third is that uh, delta L of G uh, is sequentially Colin Macaulay. Uh, and that's a lot of letters there. So I will uh, henceforth write uh, SCM for sequentially Colin Macaulay. Okay. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> this is a theorem, um, uh, but I didn't say what the definitions are. Uh, now, I, I think that uh, some of these are uh, uh, familiar to uh, some of the audience. Um, uh, uh, in the third condition, uh, it should be the Alexander dual of the delta LG should be sequentially Colin-Macaulay or it is uh, with delta LG is sequentially Colin-Macaulay? Delta L of G is sequentially Colin-Macaulay. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, which I guess you could uh, uh, phrase in terms of the Alexander dual if you wanted uh, uh, the uh, uh, some standard exchange theorems. Um, maybe that's a productive way to look. I don't know. Um, so I want to. Uh, I'm not going to tell you all the details of this. But I want to just give you the flavor of what uh, what these conditions mean. Um, I'm uh, we're doing a big picture talk here, uh, not uh, not a, a, a colloquium with an inspiring message, rather than a seminar with all of the details. So we're looking at the forest, and you might have to drill down and carefully examine a tree. Uh, but uh, 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 shovelable here uh, is a, 
I can't tell when I'm looking at shellings, whether I'm doing combinatorics or topology. Uh, but it's combinatorial and or topological uh, uh, condition. Uh, so uh, it says that you can uh, order the uh, facets or maximal faces uh, in a nice way. Uh, the specific nice way uh, is that, uh, well, one thing you're allowed to do is to attach a facet to what came before along its entire boundary. Uh, if you don't do that, you should attach the facet in such a way that it doesn't change the topology at all. Okay, so that it gives you something homeomorphic with what to what you had before. Uh, so uh, the details of this, if I wrote them down, you wouldn't look at, it, you wouldn't like them. This is a definition that it, it takes a while to love. Um, it's uh, a very good tool to, uh, uh, the, to verify the sequential Cohen Macaulay condition, which I still need to talk about. Uh, and uh, uh, if you have a shelling, you also compute uh, a lot of uh, other uh, information. Uh, so if you have a shelling, uh, it's uh, usually very straightforward to read off from the shelling uh, what the reduced Euler characteristic is, uh, for example. Uh, and since reduced Euler characteristics are uh, interesting for inclusion exclusion, uh, having a shelling could be nice anyways. Okay, well, we have a shelling, uh, well, exactly when the group is solvable. Okay, now uh, there's also this uh, sequentially Cohen Macaulay condition. And I'm, I'm not gonna tell you all the details again, uh, because it's something that just takes uh, some time to absorb. Uh, but I want to tell you that there are two versions of this uh, sequentially Cohen Macaulay condition. Uh, Uh, one of them comes from topology. Uh, so uh, in topology, well, you can do algebraic topology. Uh, so you get uh, uh, homology groups or cohomology groups. And for this uh, uh, purpose, it doesn't uh, matter which one you uh, consider. Uh, uh, so this is uh, a certain vanishing uh, homology condition uh, on, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, restrict myself to this uh, uh, POSET situation. It's a vanishing homology condition on delta uh, K1, K2, uh, uh, over each uh, interval uh, between uh, K1 uh, uh, subset equal K2. Okay, and since I'm looking at uh, the subgroup lattice, I'd better do this in the subgroup lattice. Uh, uh, what I've said here, uh, 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 holds true. Well, what I've said here is a little vague. Um, uh, it um, uh, correctly made explicit uh, this uh, uh, holds for any uh, order complex of a poset.
Okay. Uh, perhaps it, uh, for experts in the room, maybe I'll just say out loud, uh, if you wanted to talk about uh, the Cohen-Macaulay condition, uh, the condition here is exactly uh, that for every interval, uh, the homology uh, vanishes below uh, the dimension of that simplicial complex. So the uh, uh, top homology group that could be non-zero is allowed to be non-zero, uh, all the others uh, have to vanish. Now, uh, if you don't like topology, you can also uh, do this with algebra. Uh, and I think that there are uh, lots of people on this uh, Zoom that know more algebra than I do. Um, so, but this says uh, that uh, a related ring, so the uh, face ring or um, Stanley Reisner ring, uh, is sequentially Cohen Macaulay, uh, which means that it uh, has a uh, uh, filtration uh, whose uh, factors uh, are Cohen Macaulay. And uh, I'm not going to say what Cohen Macaulay is. I guess uh, you could, well, the crawl dimension is equal to the depth, if you like those, um, or the length of a regular sequence. Um, or you could uh, phrase it in terms of local cohomology of the ring. Uh, which is how these two uh, conditions are ultimately connected, uh, at least uh, uh, from the way I want to think about it. Okay, so that's uh, three uh, definitions or three non-definitions. Uh, perhaps I'll uh, pause again to see if the the flavor of these came across? Yeah, I like all, everything. But probably the sequential coin uh, I I was just trying to uh, understand this particular definition through the definition of the homology of link. But it's mm -hmm. not connecting. But uh, this, is, this is for the first time I'm viewing it. Uh, beautiful. Yeah, the, the uh, uh, connection. Uh, well, let's see. So uh, Cohen Macaulay is easier to deal with. I mean, sequentially Cohen Macaulay. Well, in the topology case, uh, you can say that every pure skeleton uh, is uh, uh, Cohen Macaulay, where uh, pure skeleton is sort of what it sounds like. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think that this becomes quite a bit nicer in the uh, order complex situation uh, because, uh, well, the links in an order complex uh, are made exactly uh, by putting together order complexes of intervals. Uh, and then it su suffices to, to look at just intervals to understand Cohen Macaulay or. Uh, uh, or sequentially Cohen Macaulay. Uh, and, uh, you know, intervals in a POSET, they're at least uh, uh, easy to draw. Uh, they seem easier to think about uh, than arbitrary links to me. Um, although uh, I spend a lot of time thinking about POSETs. Okay, so uh, I'll. Um, wind up uh, 
telling you just a little bit more about the uh, proof. Uh, and I'm not going to give any, uh, again, this is a forest talk, not a trees talk. The interesting parts of the proof, well, uh, showability is a tool for showing Colin Macaulay. So two implies three follows from abstract nonsense. But that uh, solvable implies showable is interesting and that uh, uh, sequentially colon Macaulay implies solvable is very interesting. Uh, so uh, I know three proofs of the, uh, that showable, excuse me, that solvable implies uh, showable. Okay, so again, one implies two, G is solvable implies delta L of G is showable. Okay, so uh, the first of these is uh, the uh, original proof of Shureshian. Uh, and I don't want to talk about that. Uh, it's, uh, well, it, uh, it, it was the first proof. It was a great proof because uh, it was uh, correct. I mean, it's not too bad. Uh, I think that uh, there are some improvements. Uh, I think that there are improvements partly because I had a lot to do with them. Uh, I have a, a, a proof in a, a 2009 paper, uh, at least if I can remember the year, uh, based on the uh, chief series of, of the group. So that's the one where you have uh, uh, a bunch of uh, subgroups uh, going up, uh, all of them normal in G. Uh, and where each factor is a billion. So the general idea uh, is to uh, label uh, each edge in the uh, Hasse diagram. The Hasse diagram is just a picture that you usually draw of a, of a post set. Uh, so for example, I've, I'll flash up. This is the Hasse diagram of uh, the symmetric group on four elements. Okay, so I'll label each uh, edge in the Hasse diagram. That's a H contained in K with nothing in between them with an associated uh, Ni mod Ni minus one, and the association is you take the least i uh, so that uh, Nih uh, contains K. Okay, uh, and unfortunately, this isn't quite enough. You need to refine a little with the structure of. Uh, the interval from Ni minus one to Ni, uh, at least some of the time. Now, uh, how do you get from here to a shelling? Uh, well, a shelling is just a, a, a ordering on facets. The facets, a facet is a maximal face. So the facets here are the maximal chains in the pose set. Uh, and the lexicographic order uh, where I just uh, read from bottom to top. Uh, and every time I see a label, I add that to a word. Um, and then I use that the words to order like I had a dictionary. The uh, lexicographic order on maximal chain 
uh, gives a shelling order. So this is uh, something called an EL labeling or an EL shelling. Okay, and I see that I'm just about out of time. So I'll just say that there's a, uh, another proof uh, which is uh, uh, due to me and Schweig, uh, which uh, is- uh, This is always the case, uh, that lexicographic ordering always give us the shelling. Uh, you need some conditions on the labeling. Uh, and the EL labeling gives you some strong conditions. Uh, so this, uh, the idea is that uh, your, uh, your chief series uh, gives you sort of a spine uh, that you're uh, taking everything out from. Uh, and then uh, the, uh, the EL labeling says that your, uh, the, the condition for the EL labeling, the condition on this labeling uh, says that uh, uh, you're going out from the spine in a nice way, which gives you a shelling. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, so I mean, the proof with Schwag has an entirely similar flavor. It's still lexicographic. It's based on a uh, uh, composition series uh, instead of, uh, uh, so that's the cha uh, chains where each one is normal in the next uh, instead of on chief series. Um, I'll just say it's similar. Uh, so something I like about this proof is that it gives uh, uh, the techniques involved in the proof naturally uh, give uh, a class of, uh, uh, excuse me, solvable lattices. Uh, lattices that are nice in the same way that the, uh, that the subgroup lattice of a solvable group is. Uh, we call these uh, co-modernistic lattices for various, uh, various reasons. Uh, okay. Um, I'll end with a question. Uh, so the other direction, uh, uh, that uh, three implies one. Uh, I only know about Shereshian's proof. Uh, so uh, something that I would find interesting would be a book proof uh, of the uh, three implies one that uh, sequentially Colin Macaulay implies uh, solvable. Uh, uh, because I think that this is an alternate definition of uh, solvable and uh, wouldn't it be lovely to live in a world where a uh, graduate algebra textbook says the following are equivalent, that you have a chief series of a certain form, that you have a composition series of a certain form, or that an associated algebra is sequentially Cohen-Macaulay. And that's all I have to say. I went a few minutes uh, late. I apologize for that. Uh, are there any questions? Yeah, exactly. This, this, is, uh, this is really beautiful, beautiful uh, result. Uh, it reminds me the result of Gelfand, which uh, says that uh, two topological space are homeomorphic if uh, they're associated uh, algebra, the algebra which we associated with the algebra uh, with the fine varieties. So they mm -hmm. have the same, uh, they have the isomorphism between the coordinate ring associated to them. So this is, mm -hmm. this is so beautiful. I, I haven't seen these results and the proofs are very, very elegant. Uh, thank you very much for bringing these. Uh, can you share uh, the, 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 these references? Yeah, uh, I can uh, give some references. Uh, I think I, I would be happy to make my, uh, the notes that I've written available uh, uh, for one thing, and I could write some references uh, at the bottom. I'm going to put a, a references to remind me to actually uh, do that. Um, 
Uh, so I, I, I guess I can just uh, uh, add references, uh, scan that, and email it to you. Uh, yeah. And perfect. Uh, perfect. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is really very interesting. Very, very interesting. These are very interesting results. I really enjoy your talk. And thank you for the kind words. Well. Okay, thank you for a very nice talk. Is there any question? Uh, I just have a question. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. Jan. Okay, uh, Professor, uh, you have uh, told us uh, that uh, this uh, uh, about a, a non-pure shellability. So, is there any case when this uh, will become pure shellable? Yes, uh, it's um, uh, easy to describe. Well, um, the uh, order complex of a uh, uh, of the subgroup lattice of a finite group is pure uh, if and only if the group is uh, super solvable. Uh, and I, I can pretty easily tell you what super solvable is. Well, the definition of solvable, you either have a series uh, where each one is uh, normal in the whole group, uh, but they're not, uh, uh, you can have some things in between things in the series, uh, or you have a maximal chain uh, where they don't have to be normal in the whole group, uh, but each one is normal in the next. So super solvable is where you have a series where each one is normal in the whole group uh, and each one is a maximal subgroup of the next. So super solvable is where uh, uh, you get sort of the, uh, the join of these two conditions. Okay, thank you. So uh, uh, if you're interested, uh, well, to go on, uh, it follows that, uh, uh, that if you want to characterize the uh, Cohen-Macaulay uh, order complexes of subgroup lattices, uh, those are exactly the ones uh, going with the super solvable groups. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Okay, is there any other question? One thing, Professor, uh, this, uh, I was just thinking about you. You might uh, have uh, came across uh, the algebraic criterion of the shallability. Uh, this uh, linear yeah, resolutions uh, yeah clean pretty clean resolutions and mm -hmm. then uh, with the work of uh, Herzog and uh, started with Andrew Dress and uh, Herzog and uh, Doreen Popesco they have mm -hmm. extended this particular concept and the pretty much business is there where people are trying to build the theories uh, which uh, in algebraic manner they can because uh, shallability is an empty hard problem, mm -hmm. sort of. Uh, yeah. And uh, the algebra algebraic criterion. Uh, so, so I was just curious about uh, this particular setup is, uh, though it is one directional, if there is a shallability, then it implies this thing. So one can uh, think of the shallability conditions through, through these associations. It might. I think that that's probably a little bit too direct a translation to be extremely helpful uh, for uh, uh, for proving the uh, three implies one case. Uh, and these proofs that one implies two, well, you know, I'm biased because uh, uh, I had something to do with them. Uh, but I, I think they're reasonably good. Um, uh, someplace where I think uh, there's a potential for a lot of uh, help from the uh, uh, world of algebra uh, is four, uh, three implies one. Uh, so something which seems crazy to me, uh, you know, in this theorem, uh, you've got condition one, 
which is about a nice series of subgroups with a good factorization. In condition three, uh, you have uh, something about a uh, nice uh, uh, filtration uh, with uh, uh, factors that are called Macaulay. I mean, so in both cases, uh, you have a nice filtration with a nice uh, set of factors, and uh, there seems to be no direct connection between these whatsoever. Yes. Uh, yeah, this is complete. I, I, I think uh, this is one of the beautiful results I have seen in the recent time. This is so beautiful. Uh, thank you for bringing, it, bringing this up and uh, Definitely, a lot, a lot more questions are coming. Uh, uh, probably a, a share of the reference will help us to put our hand on these problems. Is, these are so beautiful. I'm, I'm very happy to talk by email or, or otherwise. Uh, and uh, yeah. well, as I say, uh, I will, uh, 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 well, I have to go teach at uh, 1.30, uh, but this afternoon yeah. I will uh, uh, take, um, uh, take this and and add uh, uh, give you references to uh, Shereshian's paper uh, to my two papers uh, and uh, uh, anything else that I should add there uh, perhaps a paper on this uh, uh, counting problem. Uh, may I ask? Thank you. Question? Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, Shaheen. Ah, yes. Uh, uh, are there any other algebraic uh, uh, structure? I mean, uh, other properties of groups which are associated to this uh, uh, simplicial complexes, order simplicial complexes? I mean, this uh, is about the solvable, solvability and the shellability. They are connected mm -hmm. to each other. So there are a lot of other other uh, properties, you know that. So is there a, also there, are they connected with some other uh, topological properties of uh, simplicial complexes? Well, the natural, I mean, the other really natural uh, group properties uh, wind up not being lattice invariants, like ab abelian or, uh, or no potent uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, via the not. example. Uh, so it's not quite clear uh, what other properties you would look at in the subgroup lattice. Uh, now, if you wanted to look at uh, uh, no potent, for example, mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's see, I understand that you can uh, get that out by looking, uh, what you do is you take the, uh, you start with the product of uh, uh, the subgroup lattice with itself, uh, and then you can uh, go down uh, and uh, uh, only look at pairs where say uh, the first uh, entry in the pair normalizes the second entry in the pair. Uh, so by looking at things like this, you can uh, uh, recover uh, no potent. Uh, I don't have the details at the tip of my fingers. Uh, I don't think anyone has looked at uh, topology or algebra of this. Uh, it could be an interesting question. Yes, I mean, there are a lot of other uh, topology connection with the, with the that uh, simplicial complexes. So one maybe can see those connection as well. Maybe you can uh, give some references, then we can look uh, around and we will see what is, uh, yes. I'll at least give the starting point. I, I, yes, I, yes, I don't yes. want to overwhelm with the list <laughs> of, uh, of 40 references um, or, or at least, uh, uh, not in the first round. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for a very nice talk and very nice introduction to this field, actually. Thank you so much to everyone for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye now. Bye-bye, everyone.